and magic potions and miracle cures are the stuff of fiction and fairy tales. But also, we found in an ABC News investigation, the claim from the leaders of a thriving online church who offer a cure for desperate people for virtually every disease, including autism, breast cancer, and HIV. It's called the Genesis 2 Church of Health and Healing, overseen in the U.S. by a man who says he's an archbishop, Mark Grennan. But this is a sacrament claiming that what's in this glass is a miracle cure for the most serious of diseases. To find out what's in the miracle cure, we ordered a shipment, $150 for these small bottles, and took them to our respected testing laboratory. Nothing miraculous about it, essentially a kind of chlorine. MMS is an industrial chemical. It's an industrial bleach. In fact, look what happened when we poured some of it undiluted onto a pair of jeans. The denim turned white through both pant legs. Even at the prescribed much smaller dose, experts say it's still a danger for anyone to drink. The fact that anybody would suggest that you should give this to somebody is ridiculous. This is scary, dangerous stuff. But to the outrage of medical professionals, the church, using slick online videos, is aggressively pushing the miracle cure, shipping millions of bottles to people all over the world. I'm just getting into a prophetic vein. Digestive tract problems, quickly call. We've seen midgets grow. We've seen arms and legs that stop growing because of growth cells that stop. I don't make this stuff up. Tilton takes in so much money, he makes other TV ministers look like amateurs. And I want you to make a thousand dollar vow of faith. Oh, I know you probably don't have a thousand dollars, but ballot. Try to find out how much money Tilton makes and you discover the ministry is shrouded in secrecy. But Primetime obtains some of Tilton's financial documents. These are daily deposits. And based on these, Tilton's followers sent his ministry conservatively $80 million a year, tax-free. Tilton sends out an avalanche of things he asks viewers to send back to him. Miracle prayer clause he promises to touch and place upon an altar. Cords he says he'll place on a wall of deliverance arrows he'll use to take aim at a sufferer's needs. A tracing, place your hand there and he'll put his hand there too. There's holy water from the River Jordan, miracle anointing oil. The letters accompanying the items are written by ghost writers to pressure followers to write back and make donations too. Does it work? People send them in by the truckloads. That the mail doesn't go to Tilton, it's forwarded unopened to Tilton's bank in Tulsa. So the bank opens the followers' mail, not to share the agony, but to get the money. The bank opens the letters that come right. back in. And takes your money and puts it in your account. All we get is the paper document and how much the person gave. And those items that people have prayed over and sent in, believing Robert Tilton would touch them and pray over them too. Well, if some made it to Tilton, there are thousands that didn't. We found them in the garbage at the bank and the marketing research center. The angels of God, the prayer cords, the arrows. This person wanted his aimed at getting a real dad. The tracing where Tilton said he'd place his hand, ripped up by letter processors. We found heartbreaking appeals from followers and letters like this one. It came with personal photographs for Pastor Bob and a prayerful message. It also came with a $7,000 pledge the money probably made it to Tilton. The prayers went in the trash. Do you have anybody here with a short hand? One hand is shorter. I broke my hand when I was younger. So? Uh, one is longer than the other. Let's see. Let's see. Put it straight. Put the leg straight. Together. Put it. She said that one of her hands is longer than the other. But is this true? Here, we can see that her hands are the same. She forgot to do the cheap hand trick. Hands like this. Look at that. In the name of Jesus, I command you to grow. Watch. Grow. 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 Grow, 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 
grow 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 in Jesus name what are you waiting for somebody Grant is a faith healer who appears on TV all across the country and his followers travel miles to see him and give a lot of money because they believe in his miracles. Grant says it's God who tells him the names to call out of the audience and what illnesses have to be healed. We wanted to know more about Grant's miracles and his money. So we decided to begin by taking hidden cameras in to film a week of his services. We discovered that before every service, Grant and his associates circulate informally among the friends and family of the sick, making notes or even casually interviewing the people who will later be healed. We saw Grant gather information on more than 35 people he later seemed to identify by revelation from God. But if pre-interviews explain the revelations, what explains the healing? We observed that Grant uses a series of artful deceptions and tricks. For example, we saw Grant walk up to this man during the service and hold up his cane. Here's a man that's all crippled up too. He healed him and told him to run down the aisle. The crowd thunders applause. But let's look at that again. Grant isn't grabbing the cane of the man. He's grabbing the cane of the woman in the next seat. Outside, the man told us his problem was with his arm. He had never had any trouble walking. That was the lady. And when we questioned the people Grant had lifted out of wheelchairs, Everyone we talked to said they could walk all along. Could you walk at all before you came? Yes, yes. Here's what happened when Grant called up this woman. Her name is Diane Doherty. Grant hadn't talked to her, but before the service, he had talked to this woman, her friend, Kelly Sutherland. He didn't know that both of these women worked for prime time. Has she been sick? She slipped a disc last okay. year and, and uh, has been in pain ever since. Did she lift something? Or she was lifting a suitcase. But when Grant called Diane up, it seemed the information had just come into his head. This disc is not in line with the rest of them. In fact, what Diane doesn't have back pain. She said this because we'd noticed in every service Grant amazed the crowd when he detected that someone with back pain had one leg shorter than the other. Sure enough, he decided Diane had the problem too. The leg on this side, because of the slip disc, is a little bit shorter than the leg on that side. Everyone you were about to see an old magician's trick. As Diane sits down, Grant grabs her shoe, pulls out the heel of the shoe to make the leg look longer. As he prays, he slowly pushes the heel of the shoe back in, giving the illusion that the short leg has grown. There it is, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah! Let us keep it down! And every miracle means money for Grant. Despite what they claim, no healer has ever been able to produce a single piece of evidence for a single miraculous healing ever having actually occurred. But despite this, they still fill huge venues. The top ones are multi-millionaires. And what upsets me most is when they blame their victims for not having enough faith when they find that nothing's changed. You will receive your healing today. If you will receive it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for your name and for the power and the word of the living God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. This is what happens when Kenneth Copeland prays for you. Absolutely nothing. Now, Oral used to fly airlines. Right. But it, even back mm -hmm. there then, man, mm -hmm. it, it got to the place where it was agitating his spirit, sure. people coming up to him. He right. had become famous and they wanted him to pray for him and right. all that. You, you, can't, you, you can't manage that today. Right. The, this dope-filled world right. and get in, an air, get in a long tube with a bunch of demons. Right, that's exactly the And it, it's deadly. And we caught up with Reverend Copeland in Branson, Missouri. You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. If I flew commercial, I'd have to stop 65% of what I'm doing. The mess that the airlines are in today, 
I would have to stop. I'm being very conservative at least 75 to 80, more like 90% of what we're doing. Are you seeing this? I hope so, you bought it. <laughs> How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen, he made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. And you have some fancy clothes. I, I mean, do. for a pastor, you are living yes. a life of luxury. Yes, you've I got am. great homes, you've got yes, great planes, you, you drive in limos. I'm a and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Yeah. If, if you go into the old covenant... Do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? Are you saying that Jewish people they appreciate money more than... No, really? They believe in wealth. Some Man, people would find that offensive. No, no, wait a minute now. 